Welcome to another home safari zoofari and we are in our brand new kangaroo walkabout. So you guys are actually checking out two kangaroos that are eating some browse. So the cool thing right now is we have a gray kangaroo who's closest to us and then we have a red kangaroo. So we have two different types of kangaroos that are here with us and you may have visited before but the really neat thing about this habitat is people are actually in here with the kangaroos. So we have some guests here checking out the kangaroos right next to us. So it's a really fun space in that people can come in, walk the path, and the kangaroos can come close to people as well. However, right now they are enjoying some browse. So kangaroos, they are marsupials, and they are found um, all over Australia. So the gray kangaroo that's closest to us, uh, he's actually what's called a western kangaroo, and they live in the southern parts of Australia. And then the red kangaroo, they live in more of the central part of Australia. They do overlap a little bit. Kangaroos, they are marsupials, which is really, really neat. Um, so the females, they actually carry their young in a pouch. So the babies, they're born after about one month, and then they actually live in that pouch for three to five months. And once they um, are a little bit older, they actually start making their way out of the pouch and they'll start exploring and they will revisit that pouch until they're about a year old, sometimes a little bit longer, a year, year and a half. And really, really neat, these guys, they can actually have another joey as well that is born once the older uh, kangaroo is out exploring. And the mom can actually make two different types of milk to feed two different joeys at the same time, depending on how old they are. So marsupials are really, really neat. We actually have a marsupial that lives here in North America the Virginia opossum, and we always tell people those animals, they eat lots of ticks, so they do a great job living here and they help stop the spread of Lyme disease. So we do have a marsupial that lives here. People think that they're found all over, only in Australia. And this bamboo apparently is very exciting. So we have a couple more grays that are making their way over here. So you might notice the grays, they have some t uh, colors. They have little colors and that's one way we can tell them apart. So Bowie, he's got the purple tag. And then uh, Joe, he has the red tag. And Ezer, that's the red kangaroo that you're seeing. And then this over here is Chester. And then further back, we have Cheerio. And over to the left, we have two kangaroos that are lounging, which this is what they do typically at this time of day. They usually, in the heat of the summer in Australia, they're gonna be resting a lot. And they become more active usually in the evening, overnight, and into the morning. And a lot of people do ask, what do we feed these guys? So as you see, we give them lots of different types of browse. So they're eating some bamboo right now. We also give them different types of um, biscuits. And then um, we can give them some produce as well. So we give them some kale, some romaine, carrots, sweet potato. And you guys are probably noticing that they're using those front legs. Um, they have a lot of dexterity in those front legs that they can use, which they're demonstrating perfectly right now, to grasp different food to eat. And those back legs, you might notice, are really, really uh, long. So they can use those back legs and they can actually hop about 25 feet in one leap. So they can move pretty quick if they want to. And they can also hop about six to 10 feet high as well. So they, uh, they can move pretty fast if they need to. And it's not really to avoid predators for these guys. It's just to move lots of distance if they're looking for different food sources. And if you guys do have any questions, feel free to send those in. Um, one thing that we are doing in our Zufari is you guys can actually bid on a chance to come and hang out with these guys and get up and close um, and interact with them and ask any questions that you guys might have. So that's something that is happening in our virtual Zufari as well. So we wanted to let you guys know about that. And I think you spend some time up at our deck um, having a few drinks as well. So that is something that's going on in our virtual Zufari. Renee has a question. Yeah. She wants to know, can kangaroos have twins? So, great question. Usually what happens is one joey will be born at a time, but then once that joey 
reaches anywhere um, from five to seven months and that joey spending more time outside of the pouch what will happen is a new joey will be born and will start spending time inside the pouch so typically they're born at different times but they can be using um, that pouch and again um, hanging out with mom but typically it's just one at a time twins have happened before but it's very rare Tracy wants to know, are they trainable? Do we train them for any certain behaviors, like for medical exams or anything like that? Yeah, so these guys just joined us um, about a month and a half ago. So right now we're working on getting them to voluntarily come on a, on a scale. So if they are young, they're only two years old. They're all around 50 to 60 pounds, but the reds are gonna get up to 200 pounds. The grays up to 120. So we're working on them coming on a scale to keep an eye on their weight. And any kind of routine um, vaccines that they might need, we're gonna start working on them coming up near the bars so that we can voluntarily ask for those behaviors as well. So yes, definitely. Thomas and Sawyer both wanna know what is their favorite thing to eat? Well, honestly, this bamboo seems like a pretty good thing. Um, every day is different. So some days they're really into sweet potato and carrot. And then the next day they, you might wanna get a shot of this guy over here. <laughs> I just saw that, that's hilarious. <laughs> Um, so then the next day, they're more interested in a different type of browse. So I think just like people, we all, maybe one day we like pizza, then one day we want a hamburger. So they kind of vary from day to day what their favorite food is as well. <laughs> Allie wants to know, do we give them any enrichment items? Yeah, so this bamboo right here, this is some enrichment. Kangaroos, they do some sparring. So we're actually looking into getting different things that they could maybe spar with as well. Um, and we can certainly put some food in toys that they might have to forage and figure out how to get um, food out. Right now, since they've only been here for about a month, just them getting to know each other. So the reds and the grays are getting to know each other. So that's a lot of social enrichment. And then just getting a chance to explore this yard. So we have a lot of different things in this yard. We have different areas where we can put different brows. As you see, we're here in a sand area. So we have lots of different things around the yard to encourage natural behavior, to put different enrichment in. Katie asks, are kangaroos friendly to humans? So kangaroos, I mean, obviously these guys, they're used to being around people. They were born here. So these guys don't mind being around people. Obviously kangaroos out in Australia, we always give them their space, just like any animal here that we would encounter. We want to be respectful and give them their space. But these guys, again, they're used to being around people. And as you see, we've got guests here with us and they certainly don't mind. Okay, our last question for the kangaroos is from Mason. He wants to know, do they have any predators? So these guys, they don't have a lot of predators out in Australia. The dingo was introduced um, later on, so that was something that um, young joeys need to keep an eye on. But otherwise, when it comes to hopping and all that, it's mostly just to find food. Um, so yeah. Well, I think, yeah, so I think what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to head over. We're going to meet another caretaker and we're gonna get a chance to see a live uh, penguin. Feed. And yeah, you guys are getting a chance to check out the yard and they do spend lots of time at night in that yard because there's lots of poop all over the yard. So <laughs> they do explore most of that yard in the evening time. Hey. How's everybody doing? My name's Cody. You guys probably know that by now. Uh, but <laughs> welcome to the little blue penguin exhibit here in Rue Valley. You guys saw the kangaroos. Now let's take a look at blues, right? So got a bag of fish here, of course, right now. Everybody's decided to be out of the water. That's just how it's been working here lately. But the cool thing about this beautiful new exhibit is that you've got the birds spending a lot of time in the water pretty much all day. So they have their time where they're out, but then they're immediately back in the water. They're swimming for a bit, then they get out, they take a little break, and then they get back in the water. So hopefully what we can do with this nice bag of fish is try to encourage them into the pool. And at this point, it might work, and it might not, but we can always try, right? So let's, let's kind of walk down this way. We'll walk past a, a waterfowl here. So we have New Zealand Scott and also Australian wood ducks. I know they like, really like hanging out where we're at. See if I lose this bag in the pool, right? Let's see if we can get their attention. Let's have our, uh, our awesome freckled ducks over there, too. Here they come. Come. So one of my favorite aspects about this pool, about this exhibit, is that we've never had the ability to use live fish before. And so now we can actually use live fish as an enrichment, is probably the best form of enrichment that you can give to penguins, is to give them live fish. So let's see if they get interested. They look like they might be uh, taking a little peek as to what's going on. 
The ducks definitely notice. There we go. It only takes the first one. Once the first one goes in, then they all go in. And that's a very natural instinct for little penguins specifically, is that in their natural habitat, they will go out and stand at the shore and basically look at the ocean. Because nobody wants to go in the ocean first because that's the first one that gets eaten. So in your natural habitat, you don't want to do that. So that's still a natural instinct they do here. Now you've got some alert vocalizations like, hey, wait a minute, there's something interesting going on in the pool. First birds in the pool, there they go. And now they're gonna start checking out the fish. So again, really, really cool enrichment for these guys. Gets them active, even more active than what they've been. Uh, but really, really fantastic. I, again, this is one of my favorite parts. Um, the pool space is gigantic, as you guys saw. Uh, we have a current in, in the pool. I've been calling it the East Australian current, like in uh, Finding Nemo. Am I allowed to say Finding Nemo? Okay, I'm kidding. Uh, but no, a really cool current in here. It's just fantastic. Such a great space. And as you can see, they are efficient little hunters. Little tiny torpedoes. So if you guys have any questions, definitely shoot them out. Try to get to as many of those as we possibly can. Hector had a question if they're warm blooded or cold blooded. So they are a bird. They are warm blooded. They do look like a reptile in some ways though. I'll give you that. <laughs> Renee wants to know why are they called little blue penguins? So a couple reasons. Number one, look at their size. These are all full grown. This is as large as they get. Everybody that's out here is an adult. So they're little. And then take a look at their coloration. You know penguins as being black and white. These guys are more of a slate blue, hence the name little blue penguin. Also, some people call them fairy penguins too. Or if you want to get fancy, you can say little blue fairy penguin. We, we go with little blue penguin here. Chloe wants to know, how many different kinds of penguins do we have at our zoo? Oh, that's a great question. So out of 17 species worldwide, we have five. So we have this exhibit at Rue Valley with our little blues. We have our African Penguin Point exhibit that just opened as well. That is up near the Children's Zoo uh, with our African penguins, obviously. And then we have our Rockhopper penguins, King penguins, and Magellanic penguins in our Wings of the World birdhouse. We like penguins here. You know, <laughs> penguins are pretty popular. Mason wants to know, will penguins eat any type of fish? It depends. I mean, these guys, so these are like little tiny, uh, I think they're shiners or little minnows. Um, I don't even know exactly what they are. I should know that. Uh, but really, really small fish. These guys need a small fish. They're obviously not going to try to eat a herring that we do offer to some of our other penguins. But yeah, it's uh, they eat uh, quite the variety. We go through 11 different types of fish here at the zoo. All restaurant quality. Are some of them better fishermen than others? Absolutely. Some are way better than others. Uh, but the crazy thing though is since we've never had the ability to do this before and this is all brand new everybody's learning at the same time which is really really cool to watch i mean as you can tell these guys they, I, I really feel like they've gotten the hang of it though how long will it take them to eat all these fish oh you know these fish will be in here probably for another day and that'll be probably it they go through them pretty quick adam wants to know do you know how many gallons is in this um, in this pool, I think we are roughly, we're right around 35 to 40,000 gallons. So really, really giant sized pool. Joe wants to know how fast can they swim? So little penguins, they are the slowest swimmers in the penguin world. So you're talking about 2.2 miles per hour, roughly. They're really, really slow compared to other penguin species who pretty much double that. Lily wants to know, what's their lifespan? Lifespan for a little blue is about seven to eight years on in their natural habitat. Here, obviously, they can double that. Um, so yeah, you know, double their life expectancy. You're talking 14, 15. Uh, we do have a couple that are uh, just around 20, though. They live a lot longer here at the zoo, and it makes sense, really, when you think about it. Restaurant quality fish twice a day. You've got no predators, it's stress-free, and you've got health care better than mine. <laughs> Tracy wants to know, do we um, breed our little penguins? Absolutely, and we are coming up on breeding season right now. So uh, our nest boxes are in place. We've got to get a little bit more substrate in those nest boxes, and we'll be opening those up very, very soon. This is when it starts to become a real exciting time here at this exhibit. And Lauren wants to know, this is our last question, um, is there any opportunity
opportunities for people to meet these guys up close? Excellent question. We do have a behind the scenes tour that is available uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And you show up to the zoo, you can book that at the front of the park when you're buying your tickets. It's a, our little blue penguin experience. You hang out with either myself or Ricky, the other head keeper in the birdhouse. And you basically hang out with us for 20, 25 minutes, hang out with little blue penguins in our VIP area. So it's a really cool experience. We actually did our first one today. So excellent question. Thanks for bringing that up. So thanks you guys for tuning in. Do not forget that tomorrow is our first ever virtual safari, zoofari. That's really cool, a virtual zoofari. Uh, first time ever. You know, 2020 has got a lot of crazy stuff going on, but that's going to be fantastic. So definitely click on the link to register for this event. It is free, and it's also free to bid on all of our amazing auction items. Now, it's free to bid. Of course, you have to pay uh, when you win the auction, but really, really cool stuff. There's some penguin stuff on there, and of course, that's the only thing that matters, right? Penguin stuff. Maybe not. Maybe just to me. That's great. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh,